Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, the Witcher-themed card game, and today we are going to check out the new Entrench seasonal event, which is an alternate game mode in which we play under a new rule set, where every unit that we and our opponents play have Resilience, and that is the status that allows cards to carry over from one round into the next, rather than going into our discard piles as they normally would. That's an ability that normally would be extremely rare, there are only a handful of cards that have it, so for every unit to have it would be rather dramatic, I think. And as for how we would perhaps try to build a deck for this, let's take a look. So this is the deck that I created with the intention of using it for the Entrench Seasonal Event. And the thought process here was that we want to use cards that are most effective when they are on the playing field and stay on the playing field. And fewer cards that are based on deploy abilities, because deploy abilities only trigger when you play the card. And then once the card is on the battlefield nothing happens after that. So I do have a few at the top here with deploy abilities, the ones that are just extremely strong, like Dandelion Poet, Geralt Yerdin, and Geralt of Rivia. Then I have Caretaker, and I want to talk a little bit about this one because this is a card that has Purify, and Purify is the ability that removes statuses, including Resilience. So what I'm thinking here is that if we load up a bit on Purify units, that might allow us to remove the resilience from our opponents and keep the resilience on ourselves so that we are carrying over cards from one round to the next and our opponents are not. So long term, that should help us a lot in round two and or three, less so in round one. I'm curious to see if this does in fact prove to be an effective strategy or if maybe loading up on a bunch of damage to get rid of cards altogether might be preferable. Then I have... Donamir of Troy, which is our defender card, which is, I think, going to be quite valuable because that is our highest starting strength card, and with the defender means we can protect some of our other cards that will boost and be boosted. What with us being Northern Realms using Royal Inspiration, our strategy would normally be to focus on boosting as many cards as possible and targeting the cards that do special things when they get boosted, and so we do still have a fair amount of that, but with the addition of things that we think are going to work well with Resilience... So Donamir of Troy does a good job of protecting the units that are vulnerable before they get boosted or pass out those boosts. Then Elzer's Double Cross is the card that allows us to play the highest unit from our deck, which will likely be Donamir of Troy, mostly to make sure that we can protect vulnerable units, like I was saying. I think that in all likelihood, we are going to see that units are one of the most effective cards to play in this game mode because they're the ones that are benefiting from that resilient status. So I do want to minimize the number of non-units we have here, though we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Then I have the Botchling, which is another card that is useful when it is on the playing field because it deals damage every turn, or we can switch it over to the Loverkin form, in which it will boost us every turn. So the longer that is out there, the better, and benefits a lot from Resilience. Corvo here is the card that is normally, I would argue, one of, if not the strongest in what would be my usual Northern Realms setup, because he boosts at least twice, if not more, per turn, and you can stockpile those up because they're orders, and therefore you can wait to use that whenever you have a particular card that you want to boost all at once. You have that flexibility, and so that is another card that the longer he's out on the battlefield, the better, the more he will gain the charges to boost more people. So I think Resilience will help him a lot. Then I have Doodoo, and I'm not entirely sure how effective Doodoo might be here. Of course, the deployability will only trigger once, transforming into another enemy unit. The hope here is just that our opponents have some nice unit that we really want to turn into. So in theory, this could work. But if our opponent does not have any of those units, then suddenly this card is no longer all that good. Then we have Nathaniel Pastody. This will be one of our targets for the boosting because he inflicts bleed on opponents when he gets boosted. So this is one of the people who we want to focus on boosting with someone like, say, Corvo and others, including our leader ability. Then we have Siegfried, and this is another purify unit, and it purifies everyone, including ourselves. So this is another one that I have mixed feelings about. In some circumstances, I could see this being quite useful in that if, say, our opponent has a lot more units out there than we do, and we're concerned about them being able to carry over a lot more units with that resilience, and we think that they're going to have an advantage in rounds two or three because of that, we could throw down Siegfried, purify everyone, including ourselves, and 
have us start with more of a blank slate for rounds two and or three. So in some circumstances could be very helpful. In other circumstances might actually hurt us more than it hurts our opponents. So I'm interested to see if Siegfried pays out for us. Then Anastranger is another one of our key units that we want to keep on the battlefield as long as possible because she boosts certainly to the right and potentially to the left as well if she's inspired, meaning if she's boosted. So that's another one of our key boosters. Likewise for Eggman here, although I have mixed feelings about him. The reason for this being that although he does boost units to the right as long as we have not yet used our ability to damage an enemy unit by three, he has Veil which is normally a status, which is quite useful. It means that you can't gain other statuses. That means that, say, opponents would not be able to inflict poison or bleed on you. It'd be nice. However, on this occasion, I do believe that will also prevent Eggmund from gaining resilience, meaning that he's not benefiting from the primary difference we have in this game mode here. And so that means that we play him in round one, he's not carrying over to round two, and suddenly our opponent might be carrying over more units than we are, and we're sitting at a disadvantage in rounds two or three. So that means that Eggman might not be a great fit here. I do still like being able to boost other units with him. So for that reason, I do still have him in, but you could make the case that taking him out would be worthwhile. Though if we were to, say, play him in round three, obviously at that point, resilience doesn't matter because there isn't going to be a round four to carry over any units into. I think that might be the best scenario in which to play him. So we're hoping that we get him in later rounds and not in round one. Then we have Moon Dust for more purification and also damage, which I think is one of the things that you could justify taking something other than a unit for, because as long as you are removing a card that would have resilience on your opponent's side, then maybe that still means that you aren't at a disadvantage from not playing a resilience unit yourself. Next, other cards here that do damage or boost the longer they are out on the playing field, so reinforced trebuchet as long as we play in the range row will damage one. Marion Drummer will boost cards to the right by one. Redanian Archer will gain one charge to deal damage as long as it has its armor on. Spring Equinox. This is a card that purifies all units on a row, and so similar to Siegfried in that it will purify a lot of units. However, this time we can target specifically where we want to make it happen, and this is definitely something we're going to want to use on the opponent's side, so I think this could be an interesting way to sabotage their plans. And Tritum Infantry will be another one of the key units that we want to have the targets of our boost, because whenever it gets boosted, it deals one damage. And then finally, we'll have some Redanian Knights, other cards that will get boosted whenever they're out there on the playing field, as long as they still have their armor on and we play them in the range row. So that means that they're useful when we initially play them, and also when they get carried over into the next round with Resilience. That's what the deck looks like. Let's pop in now and see how it works in practice. Okay, so our opponent is Monsters. And one thing that comes to mind about Monsters, I mean, there are several different styles that you can play with Monsters, but things like Consume, I would think, would be not so great, because that means that you are destroying some of your own cards that would otherwise have Resilience, and Boost does not get carried over from one round into the next with Resilience cards, so for that reason, might not work so well, if they are, in fact, using that strategy there. As for what we want here, and this is... Fairly good mixture, we just don't really have a target for our boost. So I think we probably want to get rid of somebody here in hopes of getting something like a Tritum Infantry. So this works much better. Let's go with this. We have boosters, like Corvo. And then we have boost ids, or targets, like Tritum Infantry. So Death Wish cards. What do we think about Death Wish cards with resilience? That seems like a bit of an oxymoron. Do you delete it so that you get the Death Wish to trigger? Or do you hold on to it so that you take advantage of the resilience? I don't know about that. That seems kind of strange to me. Either way, let's start off by using Elzer's Double Cross. That will get us Donomir of Troy. We'll play it in the range row because primarily... We are looking to protect Corvo here. Boost you up. Call to turn. That's a lot of sasses on one card, right? Shield, Defender, and Resilience. So yes, you're going to consume 
this Foglet. Oh, I suppose it does bring the other Foglet from your deck. Oh, but it doesn't gain resilience. It does not have the resilience status right now. So yes, you did boost your Harpy by consuming that other card there. But next round, the Harpy will go back down to having just five strength. The other Foglet that you played, it's gone now. It's in your graveyard. That's obviously not sticking around. And this one does not have resilience. So short-term play here that I think does mean that in rounds two and maybe even three, we could see ourselves with a bit of an advantage. So I like how that's looking right now. We could perhaps play Caretaker and even use Purify on you to get rid of that resilience. But maybe we start off with Corvo. Because this is a card that the earlier we play it, the better. That means he has more time to gain the charges to boost other units. So, technically speaking, playing him in the first turn would be the way to maximize the amount of strength you have on your side. But I find that whenever you play him, your opponent usually tries to destroy him. So, playing something like Troy first gives a little more protection when your opponent does things like heal damage with units like the Wyvern. Okay, so next I think we can start bringing out either Tritum Infantry as the target of these boosts, or we can bring out other units that deal damage, like the Trebuchet or the Redanian Archer. We could even bring out Caretaker, like I was saying before, and try to purify. I think we do want to play Caretaker in either round one or round two because units with resilience only get carried over from one round to the next. They don't get carried over from round one all the way to round three. That means it's going to have a little less value later on. Of course, in round three, it does absolutely nothing for us, getting rid of the resilience. So that likely means that, say, remove resilience here. We might want to hold on to these boosts with Corvo, though, until we do play something like our Tritum Infantry. But I like how we can stockpile these boosts and wait until we find the right time to play Tratum here. More Wyverns. Which means, yes, more resilience on our opponent's side, sure. They do also have Thrive, which means that when they play stronger cards than this, Wyverns will get boosted. But I'm thinking that if we were to, say, throw down a Tratum Infantry and proceed to boost it, I'm not sure they're going to be able to keep pace with this. So, I think we go that route there. And then, that might be the last card we end up playing. This round, at least. We'll see how this plays out. One more boost. We would have loved to have deleted one of their cards with Resilience, because that would have meant, of course, that they are not able to carry it over from one round to the next. But we have all Resilience here, whereas they only have two of their cards with it. And I'd argue... Maybe two of their weaker cards. Okay. So, we are now in the lead. But I think because we have resilience on so many cards, you could make the case that saving cards is not so helpful. We might want to deliberately play pretty aggressively here in round one. In which case, we could do something like play the Redanian Archer or the Trebuchet to deal more damage. I'm thinking we go that route here, and then what we do is we use the Caretaker to remove the Resilience on the Necker Warrior. Trebuchet will deal damage to these Wyverns here. So we're trying to deal enough damage to remove Wyverns, and then we're just going to remove Resilience on anything that the Trebuchet does not target. Infantry, unfortunately, we can't choose who takes the damage from this. So we're hoping that it deals damage in the range row so we can get rid of one of you. So that will definitely be the next target for our purification. We could even Geralt to Rivia to destroy a Solano Harpy. He doesn't have resilience, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. Of course, it won't carry over the boost from one round to the next, so for that reason, the resilience isn't super meaningful. This one would still be more significant for that reason. But let's say, start off with, well, we could even Moon Dust. And get rid of this wyvern here it would mostly be for the damage the purification of course doesn't matter if we're deleting the card we could also go with the botchling though i kind of like that because that means that we are benefiting from more damage yes and also it benefits from the resilience so why don't we continue to play cards behind donamir of troy here and we will boost right him further with our leader ability as well and 
as you may have realized, we are playing a lot of cards in the same row here in order to protect them all behind Donomir Troy. does mean that we are particularly susceptible to a Geralt's Yurden, a card that resets the power on one row. So we're really hoping that our opponent does not have one of those. But short of that, this is looking quite good here. And so now we definitely... I'm thinking we do at least play one more card here so that we can purify one of the Ice Giants because I don't like them carrying over all this strength from one round to the next. Let's go with, say, Ordanian Knight is, well, best long-term so that it gets more time to get boosted, but remember, if it has resilience, it's going to carry over into the next round and it will still be able to get boosted in future rounds. Could have perhaps opted for the Ordanian Archer. Maybe that would have been preferable so that that way we could have made a point of having enough damage to take out the Wyverns. In hindsight, probably would have preferred that. Let's also swap over to Lubricant so we can boost our units rather than damaging our opponents because it's only going to damage our highest opponent. Okay, let's make sure we have time to do this and this. It's only going to damage our highest opponent when it's in the botchling form, and that would have been the Solano Harpy here. And because the Solano Harpy doesn't have resilience and has already done its thing, I'm not terribly concerned about it. So our opponent has passed. I think they realize that this is a lost cause here, but... The key here is, sure, we have more strength right now, but we also have way more resilience than our opponent. Oh, hold on. We swap over to the Lubberkin, we lose resilience. Okay, so that was a mistake in that case. Probably should have seen that one coming, but that's good to know, and hopefully we have enough of a margin here with us carrying over every other unit that we should still be fine. So we pass, of course. And that means that we are holding on to our defender, our booster, and our boost id, our target. That's the key, and we also can purify more units. So I like that a lot. We can purify every unit if we want to with Siegfried. I'm thinking, Siegfried, I'm thinking we probably don't need you here because we can use the Caretaker to remove the resilience on our opponents, and by playing you, we're just removing fortification on ourselves, which we probably don't want. There's another source of boosting. I like that. This is a little bit more targeted with the purification. That's probably all right. Let's stick with this. I think we already have a very good setup at the moment. As you can see here, we are carrying over 26 strength to our opponent's 11, not to mention that we have cards that benefit from being out here every turn, like Corvo, gaining more boosts and more damage with reinforced trebuchet. So I'm thinking, let's start off with the Redanian Archer, because the earlier we play you, the more chance you have to deal damage with your ability here. Next will probably be Tamarian Drummer to boost Pride Infantry. This one is some targeted damage, though, which means we can, say, make a point of deleting the Wyvern there. So that's great. We don't yet have anyone to purify with the Caretaker, so let's actually save that ability there. And then we might also want to save Corvo's ability. Because we can. And what that does is that allows us to make a point of boosting Tridem Infantry when we have cards that we want to make a point of destroying. Okay, so you do extra stuff. When you have Dominance, meaning when you have the highest value card, and you did not at the time you played it after dealing that damage. No, you still didn't. Okay, you're fine there. Now we have someone to target with the Purification on Caretaker. And now I think what we do is we boost Pride of Infantry with the Tamarian Drummer. We will boost Pride of Infantry with Corvo, and we'll take it from here to see what kind of damage we have. So it, the random damage went to the Wyvern, so let's definitely take out the Wyvern here. And now, that also means that we could still benefit from purifying you. Now our opponent has zero resilience, and we have a little bit here between Tamarian Drummer and Redanian Archer. So here's one thing that we were talking about previously with Veil. Vale. Sure, this is a strong card, yes, but it has Veil, vale, meaning that it will not gain resilience. So this is only a card that is benefiting you this round, but not in future rounds, so... That is not great, and we could, of course, just outright delete it with Geralt. I'm thinking we do that right here. Then we can deal damage with Redanian Archer. Make sure you go down, and then we can further boost Pride of Infantry. Damage this Ice Giant here. That's not looking so great anymore. A couple more turns, and we will get rid of you. Playing their leader ability, I think they are getting kind of desperate here. 
That means they play a 9 strength unit, and it will have resilience, yes. Now they play their actual card from their hand. They'll consume the Ice Giant. That makes some sense, because the Ice Giant, of course, did not have resilience. We got rid of it already, or that was maybe one of the cards they were carrying over from round one. So, sure. I mean, they are still looking at a pretty big deficit here, and two resilience, to our three resilience right now. So I'm thinking what we do here is let us copy Woodland Spirit with Doodoo. -doo, and then we will purify enemies that are remaining here. So we could say purify. Why don't we start with the... Yeah, Woodland Spirit, because that's nine strength. So we probably want to get rid of that. And do we want to boost now? Do we want to boost later? See if we can destroy a weaker card rather than do a little bit of damage to a stronger card. Not sure it's going to make a huge difference at this point in time. Let's just boost away. And, of course, this will be our next target for purification. If we have enough time to do that, we may not. But I don't think it's going to make much of a difference here, because we, at this point in time, are likely uncatchable. And we could proceed to, well, use one of our two remaining cards that both have Purify on them. Get rid of the Resilience on you. So why don't we use a uh, Moondust? That combines it with a little bit of damage. And then boost Trident Infantry. We'd like to get rid of the Woodland Spirit, if possible. But of course, we can't target who Trident deals damage to. But it looks like that'll end up happening here, as long as we follow up with the Redanian Archer. And at this point, there is certainly no comeback from this. Even if you consume a unit that is strong. Sure, gets you to 9 strength here, but you're just a 2 strength unit at base, meaning that if you were to get carried over to round 3, not much of a threat, and of course, you still haven't caught up to us yet. And we could proceed to use this card here. Purify. We didn't really need it, because we could have used Caretaker to do that as well. I mean, sure, we'll, we'll do it again, because we can. Then we'll do our boost. And then, we'll be on our way. So on this occasion, I think what we saw was that we made a point of making sure that we were having a lot more resilience than our opponent did. And we were able to win round one. And as long as we were able to do that, round two and round three, that was really what we were playing for. So round one was a bonus in many ways. But we knew that as long as we had more resilience than our opponent, that we'd have a big advantage going into round two. And that was enough for us to take the victory there. Okay, so our opponent is Scoyatel. They can have a lot of purification, which means they might be able to remove a lot of resilience on us. So that could be a bit of a concern. Let's take a look at what we have here. So we have some boosters, actually a lot of boosters, with Anna Stranger, Marion Drummer, and more to Marion Drummer. Nathaniel Pastodi is a target who deals damage when he gets boosted. Yes, so that is a nice combination there. But we definitely have more boosters than we have targets. We might want to try to mix that around a little bit. We could also get Dominimir of Troy with this to help defend some of our units, so that'd be helpful. Is there anyone we'd like to get rid of here? I'm thinking we actually get rid of a Temerian Drummer, perhaps? Or a Botchling, because we saw that Botchling does not benefit from switching over to the Lubberkin form, and Corbo is our best booster. That was a very big pickup there. So I'm curious to see what our opponent has planned right now. Will they also be loading up on some purifying units and cards? Would very well be possible with Scoyatel. Boosting cards in your deck. Okay. The Djinn that you just summoned does not have resilience, notably. Whereas All God does, of course, because you just played that. I'm thinking we start off with this here to get... Oh, actually, Caretaker is tied for the base strength the highest base strength with Donamir of Troy. Oh, I'm so used to this deck having Donamir of Troy as the strongest unit. That did not even occur to me that that was possible. Okay, so I was not hoping to get Caretaker. I was planning on it being Donamir of Troy in order to defend cards like Corvo and Anna Stranger here. So this, uh, we'll find a way to roll with it. it. Does mean that we could, of course, immediately remove the resilience there on you and say, boost Caretaker. 
Caretaker is strong enough that I would hope that they can immediately destroy it. Of course, we have gotten at least a little bit of value out of him already by purifying one unit, yes. But okay, and you certainly can delete it now. So that's what we get for assuming that we would have gotten one card and then proceeding to get an entirely different card. So we did still make it so that you don't have resilience anymore, meaning that that mistake will not carry over and have major ramifications into round two at the very least. Now, of course, the hope would be that you don't have many other cards that will deal damage and destroy our cards, because now we don't have much in the way of defending those strong units like Corvo. Gonna play him, but we could very well find that Corvo proceeds to immediately get locked, destroyed, something like that, even moved from the range row to the melee row where he's useless. He's very vulnerable, and yes, you can destroy him. That is not surprising. Soon as we played him, we were basically just begging our opponent to get rid of him. And the hope was that we would have played Donamir of Troy to protect Corvo, and of course, you saw how that happened. So next on our list would be Anna Stranger, and the hope now would just be that eventually our opponent runs out of cards that they can use to destroy our cards. So... We try Anna Stranger here. Technically, it doesn't matter for you if we play you in the melee or range row. There are some Scoia'tael cards that deal more damage to units that are farther away from them. I Meaning the melee row is technically, in some circumstances, preferable. And we boost you up to 5 strength. means you're a little bit, little bit tankier than Corvo was. So, even if you do get damaged, you might be able to survive this. Okay, well, it seems like you are going the damaging route. Using your leader ability to do it, though, which is interesting, because, of course, that means that that will not carry over from one, from one round to the next, and now you have enough damage to take her out. Okay. So, of course, we are sitting at a 9 to nothing deficit right now, but I'm not terribly concerned yet, because these cards here don't have any resilience, so that means that still nothing that's going to carry over into round 2. And we do still have some nice boosters and at least one target. We can still make this work. As for how best to do that, I think that hmm, maybe we start with Pastodi here. I would normally say so because he has higher base strength than the Temerian Drummer. So Pastodi is a little bit less vulnerable to getting taken out. But I think what we saw there with our opponent having to rely on their leader ability and then damage meant that the most damage they had from any cards was three. They had to have a little bit more coming from Precision Strike in order to actually take it out. So I think Temerian Drummer is safe here, in which case I do want to play you first. Because if you do get destroyed, we of course have another one that we can throw out there. Whereas Pistodi, you are the one and only. So I think we're not going to find much damage here. Well, unless they have units that deal damage after a little bit of a delay. This is definitely a high damage setup with our opponent here. And that is sort of an alternative take on what we've done with Purification. We were saying, use Purification to get rid of Resilience, and that way, they're not carrying over Strength from one round to the next. Anything. They're saying, destroy cards so that they don't exist, and therefore, cannot get carried over from one round to the next. We did play them in Range Row, which means that Reinforced Trebuchet could be helpful here, but you do have some armor, so that's not going to help us that much. Is this a random enemy? It is a random enemy that that deals damage to, so getting another unit out here would be helpful, of course. That's the only thing we could do here. Now I'm thinking we still go with... Pastoni. You would survive if you were the one to get hit. Would have even considered boosting Tamarian Drummer. In hindsight, maybe that was the way to go because that would mean that the four damage would still not take it out. Then, of course, our opponent could have followed up with a precision strike and then it would have gone down. But that is definitely what we wanted to have happen. They used that ability to deal four damage to a random unit. It hit Pastoni. Pastoni will survive that. Except now they get to play a bronze nature card from their deck, and they, of course, have nature cards that deal damage. We saw plenty of that before, and they use that to get rid of Pastodi, so that's unfortunate. Now things are looking much worse. 15 to 3 deficit here. They do now have more resilience than we do. That does make it rather challenging to come back from this one. And do we have a way out of this, or would we like to pass now? and try to limit the amount of advantage that they have on us carrying over from round one into round two. Perhaps could get another Temerian Drummer out there and just have a Temerian Drummer boosting a Temerian Drummer. 
it's not a terrible idea. Of course, the boosting does not carry over from one round to the next, so it doesn't really help us that much in that regard. Yeah, I think we probably pass here. Take the loss in round one. Accept that. We did also have our opponent use a little bit of their leader ability. That is nice. They don't have all of that remaining, at the very least. But this is going to be a tough one to come back from. Drawing into Dandelion, though, and... Now you're just teasing me. Giving me Troy. Okay, well... We have the boost Urs. We would like a target. And how would we like to get one of those? Let's get rid of Redania Knight. Eggman is another booster. Uh, we need a target. We need a target. Let's get rid of you. And we got another one. So we were looking for something like a Trident Infantry. Someone that deals damage when it gets boosted. We did not get one, which is unfortunate that we could protect Barian Drummer with Donamir of Troy. And then play Dandelion or Dandelion into Donamir of Troy in hopes of drawing into one of these two here. And what did we just miss? You have used your last leader ability, which means you also get to play a Brocklon Sentinel, which deals two damage on deploy. If you destroy a card with that, then you summon all the Brocklon Sentinels from your deck. They do not get resilience, so at least there's that, but that, of course, is uh, not a great way for us to be starting off here. But I do, at least in theory, like some of what we have going on here. So let's Dandelion, draw a card, and play a card into Donamir. To shield people, we would have loved to have had this previously. If our leader ability will boost Dandelion. So now we at least have the protection of having a defender here that will allow us to, say, do things like put the Temerian Drummer out and not have to worry about him getting destroyed. And I put him in the melee row because, again, there are some units that can deal more damage. Units that are further away, meaning, like, if you're in the range row, you take one more damage from the Scoitel unit, so... Yes, that, for that reason, could have been helpful. We also have Eggman, who we definitely want to play in the melee row. But then we do have some cards, like Reinforced Trebuchet, that we want to play in the range row. So, and Predating Narcher, you can make the case we could have put you in either row here. But let's start off with Marion Drummer. We did not draw into the card we were hoping to get, Tritum Infantry, so that we could benefit more from getting boosted here. We did get a Geralt Yurden, so we could reset a row. Which is the card that is extremely strong against us. What? How, how did you just... Completely ignore Defender there? Hold on a second. What? Oh, you dealt damage to a random unit using a Pyrotechnician. And you happen to have gotten the unit that we were trying to defend. That's unfortunate. We do have Eggman. He does many of the same things as the Tamarian Drummer did. The only thing is, he's a little bit stronger. Yes, and can use that Order ability to deal some damage. But because he has Veil, he does not gain Resilience. So I was reluctant to play him here. Ideally, we would have saved him for round three. And at that point, Resilience doesn't matter. So the fact that he doesn't get it wouldn't have been a big deal. But on this occasion, I think we still benefit from playing him early. So he has more time to do that boosting. So probably does still pay off. And you have a lot of cards here boosting a Dwarf in your hand. So that means one of these cards, at least, that they have yet to play is going to be quite strong. I think that's fine. So we have Geralt Yurden, so we can reset it. So I'm okay with that. Could even... Ooh, we could even destroy a card with Geralt of Rivia right now. Because we do have a 9-strength Pyrotechnician staring us down. We would benefit from playing one of these cards early, like a Reinforced Trebuchet or a Danian Archer, because they deal damage every turn. So the problem with that is we want to make sure that we don't damage this one here because we want to make sure it stays at 9 strength so we can actually, oh, take it out with Carol of Rivia. So we'll play Retaining Archer because then we can target the unit that we're trying to deal damage to. Try to get rid of you. And then boost Eggman, sure. What we want to do is we want to get rid of this power technician with Redaining Archer. We want to delete this one with Carol of Rivia. And then that allows us, yeah, not playing you behind Don Mirror Troy did, of course, mean you could have potentially gotten hit by a damaging ability of some variety, and that is partially why we could have justified putting Don Mirror here, but wanted to protect Edmund as well. So, 
Now, the reason why we wanted to get rid of this Pyro Technician is because if we were to Geralt Yurden, this would actually boost you back up to a 4. So getting rid of you altogether would have been great. We could do it with Eggman, but that's probably overkill because this is 3 damage here. Anything we would want to switch into with Doodoo? -Doo? Not sure. I think this is probably just time when we use Geralt of Rivia. We'll destroy you. Yes, the Reinforced Trebuchet will deal damage the range row. If we could target this one specifically, I'd say great. But depending on where our opponent plays their heavily boosted unit, we may just proceed to undo any damage that we deal with the Trebuchet. Okay, that's a lot of damage, but we have a shield on Donamir. So that meant that that did precisely nothing. That worked out well. We are technically in the lead right now. That's nice, too. And I'm thinking... Is there anyone we really want to switch into? I and mean, you are the strongest base unit with 5 power. So if nothing else, we do that with Doodoo. -Doo. I want to save you until our opponent plays this last card here, because we know it's heavily boosted. I'm thinking... Let's play Doodoo -Doo now. Transform into you. Hide you behind Donamir of Troy here. And we will boost... Uh, sure, you... And we're going to save this ability here for the very end. And our opponent has the one card remaining that we think is that heavily boosted unit that they used the Dwarven Agitators on. Yes. Oh, and it is... Okay, Sheldon Skaggs. We probably should have seen this one coming. Because it deals damage based on the amount that it is boosted. However, fortunately, you did play it on the row in which you have your other boosted units. So that means that you totally set up Geralt Yurden here for us. So thank you. We do this. And now we do have a lead. Which means we could certainly pass here, not to mention we have a one-card advantage. In terms of resiliences, Eggman will not carry over into the next round. Ooh, and tell you what, why don't we use his ability here to destroy one of the units that has resilience? That way we reduce the number of resiliences that our opponent has. So now they will be carrying over 6, 8, 11 strength, whereas we will be carrying over... This will be 3, plus 4 is 7... Plus 5 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. So we win this round. We carry over more strength into the next round. And we have a 1 card advantage. That was a good recovery there. Of course, we would have loved to have had Donmir of Troy still. That would have been huge. And here's the Trident Infantry that we so much wanted last time round. Do we want both Reinforced Trebuchets? When our opponent only has one card in the range row. Possibly, possibly not. Hoshling could also deal some damage. What other cards do we have remaining here? Uh, not sure there's much else that is better than what we have here. We could get some damage with Moon Dust, but this was partially for the purification so that we could make sure that our opponent has less resilience, which is no longer relevant in round three. Likewise with Siegfried, I mean, it is still five base strength. I'm thinking we stick with what we have. Okay, we go first. So, we could go Trident Infantry first. I think we do that. Because what this allows us to do is use our Royal Inspiration immediately and benefit from it immediately by boosting a card that deals damage when it gets boosted. And next turn, we could play any of these. See what our opponent has remaining. Okay, you do have a Dwarf out here, so you will likely summon another one from your deck. That was good. Oh, and that was... Were these the cards that you boosted with All God in round one? That was some serious long-term planning there. That does mean that you technically did take a bit of a lead there. But we do have a little bit more long-term potential with you because Trident Infantry does deal damage when he gets boosted. And we're only going to be able to do that every other turn with Royal Inspiration. Though, hmm. The Botchling, when we transition you into Lubberkin, you will lose resilience. So that is one reason not to do that. So this is round three, so that doesn't necessarily matter. We want to prioritize dealing damage or healing. I think... Let's play you. It's going to damage the unit that has the highest strength. It'll be you first, then you next. That is one benefit we have, is that yes, although our opponent may have a little bit higher base strength, we have cards that do more once they are out on the playing field. And also, we have our leader ability remaining, whereas our opponent has already used all theirs. 
and that is key because that will help Tratum Infantry, otherwise we wouldn't have had any ways to boost him, and therefore he would not benefit at all from his ability to deal damage when he gets boosted. And we may have stumped them, because it seems as though they don't know what to do here, despite only having two cards remaining. Shouldn't be rocket science here. Don't need to plan if slash when to use your leader ability. Oh, you're banishing a card. Okay. That's an interesting one. That is strong. They had to guess as to which card would have been most valuable to us long term. They opted to go for one of our strongest base strength cards and one that would have dealt damage every turn. That was probably the right choice. Though Tritum Infantry would have been a decent choice as well. Play the Trebuchet here. That'll deal some damage in the range rail. And then we will boost Tritum Infantry. And now, yes, the damage will start to stack up a bit here. We each have one card remaining. Oh, and they have Oneiromancy, so they can play anything from their deck. That is quite dangerous. They can go with whatever they want here, and that is a very strong card because it gets boosted based on the number of special cards they have played this game. And that is a lot. It goes all the way up to 12. And this... This might not be enough. We will deal two damage with the Reinforced Trebuchets. But we don't have our leader ability remaining anymore, so we can't boost and we can't deal damage with those boosts from Tron Infantry. Well, I think they may have taken it there with that last minute Oniromancy. Watch move. Oh, and look at that. They win by one. Well played. They had an ace up their sleeve, and it was a difference maker for sure. So we're going up against Skellige here, which could be... An enemy that could deal a fair bit of damage to us, which could be problematic, because if they can outright destroy our cards that would otherwise have resilience, that would, of course, limit the amount of strength we're carrying over from one round to the next, and that is the theme, of course, with this seasonal event. So, we have Anna Stranger and Corvo are our best boosters. We have a target in Tritum Infantry, and we also have another booster in Temerian Drummer. We have lots of ways to boost people, but we also have another target in Nathaniel Pastody, so... This is a strong setup. This is what I would normally use to be focusing on these types of cards when we are doing standard. But anything that we would do differently, since this is, of course, not standard, we do have the ability to purify a bit and transform a bit. Let's stick with it. We'll see how this goes. We are first. So that does mean that playing Corvo first is technically the best as long as Corvo does not get immediately destroyed but when we're going first we are perhaps a little bit safer in that regard because we could proceed to use our leader ability and notably tactical advantage get you all the way up to a nine strength so shouldn't be able to deal damage to take you out though if you do have a Geralt of Rivia of course with nine strength you could instantly delete him I'm hoping that's not the case or if it is that you'd be hesitant to do so this early on but if you do have Carol Terivia, I'd argue it's probably worth making that move right now. See what they opt to do here. Their leader ability moves a unit to their graveyard, and they deal damage based on the power of that unit, and it was enough. Wow. To destroy Corvo there, and yes, it is because you move your highest base strength unit to your graveyard. So it does mean that we got them to use their leader ability, so that's not coming back. So at least there's that, but it does mean that they managed to delete one of our strongest, if not our single strongest card. So that's unfortunate. Now that you have one more card out here than we do, I'm thinking that at least later on in this round, Siegfried could be a decent option for us. To make sure that we're removing resiliences on your side and our side too, but I'm guessing we're going to have less resilience than you. So let's throw out an Anna Stranger here, because she would be the next best booster. One that we want to prioritize getting out early, but again... Could find that if you have damage, you could outright delete her, and that is probably something that you would like to do. And with Oniromancy, you can select any card from your deck, so you could make that happen. And that you do. So we're getting rid of their damage. There is that. Which means that, in theory, at some point in time, you will no longer have cards with which to destroy our cards. Though this is thinning the number of cards that we could theoretically use that would be helpful to us right now because we've lost most of our boosters. We do still have Temerian Drummer, yes. But I'm thinking we instead, at this point, play a target like Nathaniel Pastody that we want to get boosted. 
And we use our leader ability, at least for now. Boost you a little bit. Deal a little bit of damage with that. And technically speaking, that does mean that, well, I mean, we have played one more card than our opponent, but we've almost caught up already. So next turn will likely be Tamarian Drummer. Wanted to play Pastoni next because he is a little bit higher base strength, so if our opponent does have any more damage, then they would be less likely to be able to take him out. And then we can throw on Tamarian Drummer next turn when we know we have someone who would benefit from getting boosted from it. And we knew that we had our leader ability, so we could instantly boost Pastoni. Okay, so you play an alchemy card from your deck that is also potentially dangerous. Okay, this one you're just boosting yourself. And this card has two strength, yes, and a strong deploy ability. But with only two strength, that means the resilience is not benefiting you all that much here. So I think that that actually is probably not that strong of a card, at least in this game mode, relative to standard. And standard is great. In this game mode, less so, I would think. Then now I think we don't have any reason not to use Tamarian Drummer here. Further boost Pastodi, cause further bleeds. What do they have next? Now they'll spawn some crows. It is not terribly strong. And they do not have resilience at all. So that's quite nice. Alright, and congratulations to you. You have earned a mute. Is there anyone we would like to transform into with Doodoo? -doo? Or would we like some consistent damage from the Botchling or the Reinforced Trebuchet? I'm thinking maybe we do some of that. Let's go with the botchling. And we do have our leader ability back, so we'll boost Astodi. And I don't think we need to worry about him reaching 9 strength, which would sometimes be a concern if our opponent were to have Geralt of Rivia, but we saw that when we had Corvo previously at 9 strength, our opponent had to do some elaborate leader ability moves in order to delete him and did not use Geralt of Rivia, so I don't think they have him. Four crows, once again, they do not have resilience. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. That is largely a short-term play. And for that reason, I think, now we're looking at Siegfried and thinking, we definitely don't want to play you this go-round, because we would be hurting ourselves more than we hurt our opponent. So we probably want to make a point of making sure that we end this round early enough that we don't feel like we need to play one more card and potentially hurt our long-term chances. But let's throw down at least one more card here that would help us out. Reinforced Trebuchet, this will deal a little bit of damage every turn. And it does have Resilience, of course, so we can carry that one over. And at this point, we are gaining enough each turn and damaging enough each turn that it's going to be fairly difficult for our opponent to catch up here. And they may realize that. Okay. Oh, boost self for each, each allied beast. That is the card you were setting up. We do have Geralt of Rivia here, so we could delete you. Which is tempting, though bear in mind, we will continue to get boosted and deal bleeds. We will also deal damage to the Reinforced Trebuchet here and with the Botchling. If we were to pass here, our opponent would still need to play one more card in order to surpass us, meaning they would have a card disadvantage, and... Also, we have, well, we'd have a similar amount of resilience to them at that point. We'd have a little bit more, depending on what they do with their last card there. Let's still use Geralt of Rivia. I was thinking maybe we don't use you here, because Axel Three Eyes there got boosted all the way up to an 11, but that wouldn't be the amount that he carries over from one round to the next. He'd go back down to his base value, so wouldn't be nearly as dangerous there. Maybe that would be reason to hold off here, but at this point, we are certainly uncatchable. So our opponent really should pass here. And they do. Okay. Now, at least under normal circumstances, that would be the clear decision to make. However, in this game mode, not necessarily the case. Because we'll pass, sure. But they have two cards with resilience relative to our five. Including some that are playing well off of each other. Namely, the Tamarian Drummer plus Nathaniel Pastodi. That means that we still, I think, have a pretty significant advantage here in this round. And we could use Caretaker 
to purify other units that our opponent has so that we can remove their resilience. I'm thinking that's probably worth keeping and may mean that Siegfried is not terribly necessary. John Mir Troy is fantastic, so I like that. And we have one more reroll that we could use and maybe getting rid of Verdanian Knight because I think we're likely going to want to play you in the melee row and Verdanian Knight needs to go in the range row. Okay, and that's another card that goes in the melee row, so that's good. As Veil, so it won't gain resilience, but I think we have a good enough setup here that we should be able to take this round as well. Fingers crossed. So I think here we want to protect ourselves first and foremost. We have enough cards out here that are already set up the way we want to have them set up. With Tamarian Drummer boosting Nathaniel Pastody, that we'll protect them with Donamir here. Then we'll boost Pastody to apply more bleeds. And at this point, with the trebuchet as well, our damage is going to be enough to almost immediately take out all of our opponent's cards there that they have out already. And that card, normally, you would want to have it in your graveyard. This unit moves to the graveyard during the round, summon it to the melee row and give it duty. Okay. So, that means that, yes, we may find ourselves dealing enough damage to delete this card here, in which case it will likely come back, so that's probably what our opponent has in mind here. But that may not be much of a concern, because I'm assuming that when it does come back from your graveyard, it will have Doomed, yes, but it probably will not have Resilience, so even then, not a huge problem. We could even... Tell you what, we could even turn into that card? We could even turn into that card. Hmm... Not sure we want to do that or save up a little bit let's play Eggman here my thought process is we want to have you boosting someone as early as possible and then next turn that allows us to play Tritum Infantry and boost you and deal damage that way again the damage at this point in time at least short term is maybe not super helpful because this guy is just going to end up coming back from our opponent's graveyard but I'm assuming that they will play additional cards because uh well they're sitting on a 35 to 3 deficit right now so they have a lot of ground to make up we did play, I think, one more card than they did in the previous round. So that means that they do have a card advantage, but then again, card advantage in this game mode is a different kind of concept when you have so many resilience units carrying over from one round to the next. So with as many units out as we do, do they really have card advantage? I'd argue probably not. And for that reason, maybe they are a bit stumped here. Okay, they'll deal some bleeding with this unit and play it in the melee row so that it doesn't get as damaged from things like the reinforced trebuchet. Well, let's throw out Tritum Infantry for some more damage. And I mean, you can take your pick as to whether we should boost Nathaniel Pastody or Tritum Infantry. Technically speaking, Pastody deals two damage per boost, whereas Tritum Infantry deals only one. However, this is a bleed, so it's a little bit slower, whereas this is upfront damage. Bleed means you could stack 20 bleeds on a two-strength unit, and that's just overkill, not doing you any good, whereas Tritum Infantry just gets rid of it. So I think let's go with Tritum Infantry there when we have relatively low HP units like this. And then we'll pass here. And that does mean that, yes, you will come back now, as anticipated, but you do not have Resilience, so that means that... In round three, you're not coming back, and therefore, it's not looking so good for you right now. Of course, you've already used your leader ability. We forced you to use that in round one. And that unit gets boosted whenever you play an alchemy card. Gets boosted by two, if you have two of these out there. Which means that if we could say, get rid of you, that'd be great. But we also have Geralt Yurden, so we could reset that row with you in it and get you back down to four base strength, so not so concerned about that. Let's play the Caretaker. And let's start removing some resilience, because you do have two turns before you'll be able to do that again. And I think that'll do for this turn here. And at this point, not even sure what you would do here. If you have another one of these pro clan preachers then you probably play one of them but oh you played a, a card to bring back a bronze skelga unit from your graveyard and then you didn't have a bronze skelga unit 
Yeah, that's that's never a good sign. So in that case, sure, why don't we transform with Doodoo as to who we want to transform into? Uh, sure, maybe you. Let's try that. Okay, and we'll boost. On this occasion, let's still go with Trident Infantry here. Okay, that gets rid of one of their few remaining cards here. And once again, okay, now I think you do have a Skelly unit in your graveyard, because we did, of course, just destroy one. Don't think that's going to make much of a difference for you, though. And we could reset a row with Geralt Yurden. Uh, that's not really going to help us out much, because we damaged you, so that's just going to heal you. But we play it here, and we make a point of resetting uh, this row here to do precisely nothing. Then we can purify you so that you do not have resilience. Now you have no resilience. Then we'll deal three damage to how about you with this ability here, and then we will pass and call it a day. And they do still have a couple of cards remaining. They can play any type of skeleton unit from their deck there, even a gold one, and they do opt to bring back the same unit there. So even though we can't play any cards, we still have cards getting boosted every turn and dealing damage from that. And they cannot catch up. Alright, so relatively comfortable win there, and in some ways that one felt a little bit more like the typical standard match in which we just were focusing on getting our targets and our boosters, boosting our targets so that we dealt damage whenever that happened, and as you saw there, it worked out quite well for us. So there's a look at the new Entrenched Seasonal event there. Let me know what you think might be the best way to set up your deck for that in terms of faction, leader ability, cards and skills on those cards. What do you think will work best? There is also a new draft mode, which I'm curious to check out. So if you liked this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and next time, let me know if you're interested in having us check out what the deal is with this new draft mode. I've not yet tried it out myself, but I'm quite curious. So... With that, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time.